Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson. With the real estate market in limbo, 2023 may become one of the most volatile years on record for homeowners and home buyers. The big question on everyone's mind is this 2008 all over again. Joining us now is real estate investor Adam Leffler and Matthew Bell. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you this morning? Great. Good to be here. Excellent. Good morning. Adam, I'm going to start with you. Adam, is the real estate market hot right now? Well, everything is kind of individualistic. You know, some markets are still doing very well, but uh, a lot of the markets are starting to soften and people are feeling it. Matthew, is this a good time for buyers or sellers? We always talk about whether it's a buyer's or seller's market. Yeah, I would say it's it's uh, shifting for the uh, buyers. There's downward demand given the interest rate increases. So, um you're, you're going to see a little bit of a slowing in most markets. And I don't know that it's a, a clear cut winner in the uh, the buyer seller um, competition, let's say. Especially with those interest rates going up. Going deeper into 2023, Adam, this question's for you. What should everyone expect? Well, I think we're going to see a lot more seller financing. I, I think we're going to see a lot more uh, people looking at leasing versus uh, purchasing right now. I think there's also a lot of lender activity where they're trying to get aggressive with adjustable rate mortgages again and other types of uh, alt financing. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot more people that are going to be looking for housing assistance. So it's going to be a little bit of a mix. It's kind of a transitional year, and I think. Matthew, for those ready to buy a home, what's the best move? Should you invest right now or should you wait it out a little longer? Well, yeah, that's the million dollar question right now. Um, I think if you have the opportunity to buy uh, with some alt financing, uh, some non-traditional type uh, situations, I think you, you'd probably be okay to sell. Um, but if you really don't uh, have any kind of buying opportunities on the other side, I think it, it may be wise just to kind of batten down the hatches and, and hang tight. Adam, you briefly touched on the rental market. Do you think we're moving more toward a rental nation as a whole? Based on the economics right now, yes. In general, that's more of the direction that we're headed in. And there's opportunities in that for everyone. But uh, yeah, absolutely. And Matthew, for you, what about buying rental income property? Is now a good time to do that? Or is it something that maybe you should wait on? Well, as the interest rates go up, the money to make those kinds of purchases is is more expensive. Uh, that being said, uh, like we just talked about, we are more and more becoming a nation of renters. And so there's a real opportunity from an investment standpoint there. And I'll ask both of you guys, Adam, I'll start with you. When it comes to the real estate market, I know here in Florida, it's been hot and has shown really no signs of slowing down. What other states right now are hot when it comes to real estate? Well. You know, again, there's typically more pockets and in those states that you're referring to. Uh, for example, the Huntsville, Alabama market still doing very well. The Atlanta market still doing very well. Uh, the Tucson market still doing very well. So there's a lot of pockets around the country, but not necessarily the whole state. So I think you're probably looking at uh, what we call the uh, population positive or job positive areas and uh, job growth or job negative loss is really a big indicator on where to look. Matthew, Adam, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us.